Okay, um, so let's start by introducing ourselves. Um, hi, I'm Caroline Blanco. I'm the Director of Program Development and Collaborations at the American Diabetes Association. And if you could introduce yourself. Yes, hi, Caroline. My name is Denise Octavia Smith. I'm a community health worker and the inaugural executive director of the National Association of Community Health Workers. Great. It's so great to be with you today, Denise. And yes, good to see you again. Yeah, and we want to talk about um, the important role that CHWs play and, and really highlight why we're here today to have NACHWA and ADA talk about our partnership. Um, at the American Diabetes Association, we know that CHWs play a critical role in supporting their communities and helping to increase individuals' knowledge and access to resources when it comes to chronic diseases, especially mm -hmm. in this case, diabetes. Yes. Um, so I'll, I'll start by kind of highlighting some diabetes statistics, just so folks are aware of the impact of diabetes in the United States and how diabetes disproportionately affects those that are in under-resourced communities. So nearly half of Americans have diabetes or pre-diabetes, and one in five adults with diabetes don't even know that they have it. Um, compared to non-Hispanic white adults, Black and Hispanic adults are 70% more likely to be diagnosed with diabetes. And also American Indians and Alaska Natives are almost twice as likely to be diagnosed with diabetes. Um, and we do know that diabetes is associated with an increased risk of heart disease or stroke. So from your perspective, Denise, in working with NACHWA, um, what type of work or activities have community health workers done that have focused on chronic disease and diabetes? Yeah, first of all, um, thank you for highlighting those really sobering statistics. Um, every time I hear um, that half of Americans, right, are living with diabetes or are in a pre-diabetic state, um, it's really sad because we know that type 2 diabetes is completely preventable. Um, and I think, you know, I want to start with the fact that uh, so many people do not know they have it. And I really just want to say, I think that speaks to the fact that even though we are a very well-resourced country compared to many places on earth, there are lots of places where people can access primary care and screenings. Many people really do not know um, that they are at risk, right? That they need to be screened, right? That they need to have a relationship with a primary care provider so that they can prevent uh, diabetes, which really brings a world of complications um, and perhaps a lifetime, right, of complications and specialists, uh, medicines, et cetera. So the role of the community health worker, um, and as you and I know, Caroline, uh, community health workers, first of all, are people living in your community, right? They're people with that shared lived experience. Um, they share often the same language, the same culture. They may have grown up in that geography. They may have been people who are managing their diabetes, right? Or um, they're people with other life experience. And they've decided that what they really want to do is love on their communities. They want to address the gaps and uh, the navigation challenges that everyday people have so that they can achieve um, their own health and well being. And so, specifically in diabetes, community health workers have a critical role moving upstream, right? We want to make sure that people have access to every existing resource in their community. And that may be, um, you know, a farmer's market where they can get nutritious food. Um, it may be tokens so that they can get to a grocery store, right, where the, the cost of food might be lower and the food might be fresher, um, where they can enroll in Medicaid or understand um, their benefits in uh, the health insurance or the health care coverage they have, um, or where they can get help um, communicating with a doctor, right? Asking the questions they need to ask so that they can, you know, be on the road to health and well being. So, the National Association, many of our members um, are working in this area. And as I mentioned, we're really honored to 
have sustained this relationship with the ADA for so long, uh, lifting up the expertise of CHWs across the country. Yeah, and just as you mentioned, the ADA, we value our partnership with NACHWA, and we really recognize CHWs as part of the diabetes care team, the full yeah. team. Um, in the ADA's standards of care in diabetes, which is our guidelines and gold standards in diabetes care prevention and management, it really calls out the role, the important role of CHWs, um, helping to create that community clinic linkage that you're talking about. Um, it really highlights that CHWs can be a part of a cost-effective, evidence-based strategy to improve the management of diabetes and cardiovascular risk factors in underserved communities. Um, they also help to assist with the delivery of DSMES, so that's diabetes self-management, education, and support in those under-resourced communities. Um, and CHWs, they really help to provide the health education with any type of language barriers or cultural sensitivities, just like you mentioned, um, to really help those individuals understand um, if they are at risk or have diabetes and they aren't even aware of it. So um, some of the things that the American Diabetes Association offers is that we do offer continuing education for CHWs as a healthcare professional. Um, we do have a CE module for CHWs. And this is a, a four module series that aims to increase CHW's understanding of diabetes and diabetes management. So mm -hmm. CHW's, they themselves can feel empowered to provide their community with the guidance um, to best manage um, individuals' diabetes, to ensure that they have access to services and resources and the care that they need in their community. Um, so we have a variety of topics in our Institute of Learning for CHWs, and we encourage all CHWs to access these free resources on Diabetes 101, gestational diabetes, um, mental health, type two diabetes in youth. Um, so there's so many opportunities for professional education for CHWs to continue to play that important role of um, improving the health and well-being of the communities that they serve. Um, so Denise, I'd love to hear some of the things that NACHWA has done to implement some diabetes-focused health education in the community. Yeah, and thank you for calling out um, the four-part series uh, for the CE because um, many community health workers, when they receive core competency training, don't receive this specialized training. Um, but as you mentioned, the statistics uh, lead us to the conclusion that all community health workers, right, are touching uh, lives and interacting with people every day, and they need this really critical knowledge. Um, I think that a lot of people also don't know the extent to which community health workers are working, you know, at youth centers, they're working in school-based health clinics, and places where youth are. So again, there are many opportunities for CHWs every day uh, to leverage this expertise. And so I just encourage people to, you know, to get the training. You know, we've been um, really fortunate to partner with the American Diabetes Association for uh, several years. As we were just talking, you know, during COVID-19, we felt it was really critical to lift up CHWs roles. You know, as far as the, the CE cohort is concerned, we were able to partner with the American Diabetes Association um, to target different communities, uh, you know, Atlanta, Georgia, Washington, D.C., uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico, uh, many places around the country um, to make sure that uh, CHWs and community organizations could access this information. And because we have national membership, uh, we have membership in all 50 states, about 30 different tribal nations and a growing number of US territories. We were able to share this information about the CE training uh, you know, through our national newsletter. Uh, we created marketing materials. We posted on social media. You know, We would do different blasts and we try to center the voices of 
persons who are living with diabetes. And so we have one of many partners, but I'll just call her out here. Her name is Mercedes Cruz. She's just a champion of health and well-being, um, but she is a person with lived experience with diabetes um, and who loves to teach. She is a CHW promotora and she loves to teach. And so we were also able to directly disseminate this knowledge and information uh, about the CE opportunity and just get CHWs connected to uh, this area of expertise through direct training. Yeah, that's great. And just as you speak of some of the past activities, um, the American Diabetes Association and NATRA have worked before the pandemic together in 2019 to establish um, the ADA's CHW professional membership. So um, we're really, you know, putting CHWs at the forefront as one of the diabetes member care team members. Um, the, the CHW professional membership, it includes benefits that offers free or discounted health education materials that CHWs could utilize, um, engagement through one of our interest groups that focuses on a variety of topics and specialties. We have a women's interprofessional network, um, peer connection through our Diabetes Pro member forum, um, attending members only webinars. So this is also something that ADA and NATRA has done in the past where we've hosted joint webinars or podcasts um, focusing on health disparities, um, COVID-19 um, barriers, as well as looking at opportunities that partnerships with ADA and NACHWA have really flourished to provide health education at the grassroots level. So the ADA has worked with NACHWA to provide resources for individuals in different languages. So we also have this um, CE module available in English and Spanish for CHWs, but we also have health education materials for individuals available in English and Spanish, as well as other languages too. So this is the perfect opportunity that ADA and NACHWA have worked closely together to really provide cultural sensitive resources to the communities that CHWs serve. Yeah, uh, you know what, uh, you mentioned 2019, and I was thinking, yes, that was before I even came on as a full-time staff member. That really shows, again, uh, the vision and the commitment of the American Diabetes Association, right, to partner with an organization that was just forming, um, because that was our founding year, 2019. We're actually celebrating five years wow. as of April 2024, so, um, so this is a, a wonderful time to sort of mark the relationship. Um, I'm also thinking about uh, the way that our partnership between NACHWA and the ADA allowed NACHWA to provide pass-through mini grants um, to CHW networks, associations, coalitions, or CBOs in the No Diabetes by Heart program where we were directly saying uh, to everyday people, right, to different communities, come and learn more about the No Diabetes by Heart program. Uh, let's get people who are living with type 2 diabetes engaged in the program so that they can prevent cardiovascular disease, um, making sure that they have access to all the tools and resources and that they know their risk for heart attack, um, for stroke, et cetera. So there's actually been layers, right, of engagement um, that we've been able to implement together. Yeah, it's been great. And we're looking forward to continued collaboration. The opportunity to be able to partner with NACHWA has really helped to increase awareness of diabetes prevention, diabetes management, diabetes care in the communities. And CHWs have played such a pivotal role in serving that community clinic linkage to help the individuals have access to care, access to health education, and so forth. Um, any any other last parting words as we close out, Denise? You know, I think just to say that some of the current work we're doing is drilling down a bit more on uh, the social determinants of health and how important 
Um, they are in uh, preventing uh, diabetes or in making sure that people, again, have access to the resources and services they need to manage their diabetes um, well and live a healthy life. Um, and also, I just want to recognize uh, the ADA's commitment to cultural competency. And so we're also working right now to, um, you know, to look closely at the learning materials and the curriculum to make sure that we reach everyone, uh, as you mentioned, in every part of uh, the United States. Yes. Well, thank you again, Denise, for your time. Um, encourage individuals to visit the Natural website for more information on ADA's resources and to get additional information about professional education, CHW professional membership, as well as health education resources that CHWs can use in their community. So thank you again for your time and we look forward to talking with you again soon. Thank you, great to talk with you, take good care.